you know, that's the song now it is. Yep, I like it. You know, I mean, I was thinking about getting Taylor Swift to do the full version, but that's just me. You should just do all the pre-opening music on the podcast. Alright, hey everyone. Um, it's, hey, welcome, I'm the Shock. Welcome, this is going to be a uh, T-Force RPG one-shot adventure of these monthly tales from Vestralon, the uh, world that I have custom-made and used for our podcast. It's a long story, and so I'm going to start doing some monthly one-shots with a bunch of people of different stories that go on with characters that we've explored from past games or maybe seen in passing through other campaigns or even in the podcast so to to flush out and let people see the world more and because well people want to play more of my pathfinder games so hey we'll do this so this week and for the first one of the tales from vestralon we're going to have the revenge of colic ironside um Kolik Ironside is a uh, barbarian warrior who has traveled quite a bit of the land, originally growing up and uh, being, well, a, a gladiatorial slave, and became kind of famous for his combats there, and teaming up with a few other people, such as Tothiel, Shade Runner, and Neko, uh, became infamous in the city Rip of Ostalk Hastam. Ne Stalker is Neko. Wait, we lost Stalker! Rip Stalker. Rip Stalker. I just accidentally closed my internet browser. Oh, GG. <laughs> bronze <laughs> roll 20 mechanics. God um, damn it, get your shit together. <laughs> Hashtag so, bronze level roleplay. So what we have here is, cur in, in the current day, a lot of these characters have gotten themselves set up in some pretty, you know, they're, they're much more powerful, wealthy, and influential. With Kolik and Tothiel and... Neko being up in Rob Tug's rest, being uh, prominent members of the new city that's up and coming. And, but the adventuring life and personal demons just wouldn't let Kolik rest. Uh, there's still the matter of his mother who was killed in gambling dens from his past, and that led to his slavery and also partial reasons he's got bounties on his head. Yep. So after sitting around Rob Tugs for so long and dealing with politics, he got frustrated and decided he's going to go track down the murderer of his mother now. And catching wind of this was, of course, his ever-faithful um, companions. Excuse me? Excuse me? And it, well, the first people noticed that he was going to be leaving were Neko and Tara. Neko, the love that he picked up in Ossium Hastum and Terra the love he had from the gladiator pits it's led to a very <laughs> weird situation and uh, well we'll get into our cast of characters here um, we've got Crazy Phil playing his original D&D character or Pathfinder character Colic Ironside the Barbarian say hi Phil I got two hot bitches right beside me well alright and his two <clears throat> hot bitches uh, Terra the also former gladiatorial slave and cleric and bard um being played by none other than Cargan. Hello. Cargan's a hot bitch. Um, yeah. And the infamous cat person ninja that killed one of the potential kings of Ossium Hastum is Stalker playing Neko. Uh, Stalker's just making weird noises. Okay. Um, and of course, there is the another rogue from those past games, and now the head of thieves and intrigue over in Rob Tug's Rest. We have Tothiel Shade Runner being played by Asmodai. Let's be real. The real protagonist of the story. Oh, he's only a protagonist in his own story. And then uh, joining us for this for, for, for this adventure are going to be two accomplice, accomplices for... Tafio gathered search information for his networks of spies and found the location of the murderer of Kolik's mom. And he is hanging up in uh, uh, the city-state of Averley on an island to the south and is running a casino, a man by the name of Ivan Strench, and has become a prominent wealthy lord there, running one of the most famous gambling dens in the city. And Tafiel thinks to himself, hmm, Cole can get his revenge 
and I can pull a heist. So he tries to find well, a. Well, I mean, you say heist, I say hostile takeover. You know. We'll we'll, we'll compromise. Heist will take over. Um, there we go. And the tries I'm to figure out what. Watching the stream, there's actually a map. That's the mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a map. That's there the isn't world. for us. That's... Oh well. That's because I hadn't done that yet. <laughs> uh, report, report the shock for bad GMing. Um, Hashtag bronze level GMing. Hey, man, you guys don't need to see oh. it. So, he looked into his contacts and found for the network, surprisingly enough to him, was uh, there is a thief in Averly who has some of this information that can help him out. A name from that he knew growing up around a... Uh, a halfling alchemist thief by the name of Miro, who uh, famed himself as being uh, one of the more legendary thieves of Ossium Hassam, having never been what caught. <laughs> While never being caught for any of his crimes, he did piss off the thieves' guild that more or less ran him out of town for suspecting him of being too much competition. So he's gone and plied his trade elsewhere, where he's teamed up with a... Uh, Elven fighter who is the muscle to his uh, his plot. The heavy muscle. The heavy muscle. An elven fighter by the name of Ajax. And the two of them have been making a pretty good name and uh, doing jobs together down in Av Avlery. And when they heard from Topio that they're trying to find information of there, Miro's like, yeah, I've got information. And I think I've got a job if you've got the people that can do it. So, where we are starting this game, and we've got the roles of Miro, the halfling alchemist, he's being played by Spork. Hello, Gov. Oh my. Oh, Jesus and Ajax, Christ. the elven warrior, being played by Arcanine. Hello. So, where we're beginning this uh, intriguing tale of revenge, greed, and... Uh, Potential murder. Potential. No, <laughs> at least <laughs> one. Okay, okay. I'm gonna say this right here. If this entire game runs with literally no one being killed, NPCs or players, I will give you all mystery skins. <laughs> Deal. Is that a challenge? <laughs> I just don't see it happening. So, so they hashtag, you're so confident that's not going to happen. Role carry? Uh, that that also okay. includes. Ivan Strench, the murderer of Colix. All right. Oh, yeah. Fair <laughs> so. We can't kill, but can we torture? I... Oh, we'll convince him to kill himself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> convince him to kill himself. This isn't Fallout 3 ending. Um. Anyways, so. Mm. We're, oh, we're spoilers. Yeah. The game's like spoilers. eight years old. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Can't just go and do that. Snape what killed thinking? Dumbledore. Vader's Luke's father. What? What? Spoilers. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Fucktards. So, where the story I begins the stream. is... Well, the stream doesn't need to be censored. There's no cutting the information, man. Alright, so... Can't stop the signal. Can't stop the signal. So, anyways, where this story begins um, is with Kolik, Tothiel, Neko, and Terra arriving in Avlery via boat um, at the docks and going into a tavern that they were told the, to meet at, to meet Miro and Ajax, where they'll begin to share what information they have and figure out their exact plan and, you know, and obviously insult each other and try and one-up each other in conversation. So, you guys arrive off the boat and right there on the docks is the tavern known as the non-stereotypically awesome halfling inn. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been to a few of the taverns in my time. This is by far the most unoriginal one yet. I look over at Cole and go, this is, the, this is not good. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people hate halflings for some reason. Because <laughs> they're a bunch of dicks. <laughs> So, you four make your way into the tavern, which um, is a little difficult for someone of Kolik's size, because this is actually kind of halfling-sized. 
Oh, um, great. Luckily, it's designed so it can barely fit someone of Phil's height because it's got two floors. So a two-story halfling inn. Um, and you come in there, and it's kind of dead for the most part. There's a few people um, sitting about, having some drinks. Over in the corner, Tafio, you see a face you haven't seen in a long time. A very smug-looking halfling sitting at a table. I'm not sure if he's drinking or what he's doing at the moment. And with him is a like very rough-looking uh, elf uh, wearing wearing very bright and shining plate mail. Uh, okay, so I, I see this and I s- s- subtly like gesture point them out to Phil, but I don't I don't like do it in a way that acknowledges their presence. I'm totally like not paying attention to that. I'm gonna go up to the bar and uh, get a drink. And a little bit about Tothiel, since he's uh, taken over and is master of intrigue. Uh, he, he wears quite fine clothing now, although it is a, a magical item known as the, um, what is it, the sleeves of many garments. But like, so right now he's got like a nice waistcoat vest with a, a long jacket on and stuff like that. But that's all. It's just to uh, look very important and whatnot. All so right. he's... He notices, he motions to Phil, makes sure that he knows who's over there and that they're the ones they're looking for. But otherwise, pouring and getting a drink. All right. What, what are you ordering? Um, what do they have? Well, they have? Has Citra High made it out here? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, you look, he kind of like God slides a little, you know, paper to you. With a list of names, and uh, you recognize a, a lot of the names on this uh, specific list here as being brews made by the one and only Cogs Adamwell. God damn it! Business partner. Business um, business business partner. You know, Rogue Amounts Town. Yeah, there's the Citra High. There's the Dust to Dawn. There's Brad's Dumb Recipe, The Little White Lie, The Amarillo oh. Pale Ale, The Psychopathy, The Mosaic Smash, The Session Pale Ale, The Cherry Wheat Daybreak. We're going to go with The Cherry Wheat Daybreak. All right. It's a, it's a nice fruit beer, you know. Um, I, I, I had Pump <laughs> give me a list of the names of his homebrews to use for this, just in case nice. I was wondering. Um, Lovely. Right. Well, me noticing that I can't sit on and the stools because they're too tiny for me. I decided to sit on the table. <laughs> I nudge at Tothiel a little bit. So, are we going to talk to these guys or? Dude, just just wait. Hold on. This guy's a douchebag. I know him <laughs> from a long time ago. We're going to, you know, we just got to give him the cold shoulder for a little bit so he doesn't feel important. Uh, whatever. <laughs> So, well, so you're sitting at the bar for a drink, and Kolik is sitting impatiently on top of a table. What, <laughs> uh, um, what's what? Neko and Tara, what are they doing? I'm hanging by Kolik's side. Uh, I think I'm gonna order myself a drink, uh, since we're gonna be taking our time with talking to these people. I'll, I'll buy drinks for everyone. All right, in, in our party. Oh god. god. <laughs> oh. And this is where the invention of rolling for sexual Just tension back. came from. <laughs> so Spork, Arcanine, you guys are sitting at your table, patiently waiting at the, you know, agreed upon meeting place and time when Myro notices a much better dressed Tawfield than you remember from the poor, nearly anorexically skinny half-elf that you knew growing up on the streets of Alcium Hasdam. He seems to have done quite well by himself. But you still recognize his smug face. And uh, the, a party of a large hulking human in heavy armor, a cat lady, and 
I don't even know how to begin to describe Cargan, to be honest with you. Um... Oh, please. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Please, I, I, I feel like we need a proper shot. description. My bad, you're right. Cargan, why don't you describe Terra for us? <laughs> Thanks! Alright, uh, Terra is, um, I would say she's pretty much your standard hive human. Uh, she's got, she's got, I'm gonna say, uh, since, uh, LeShock didn't tell me what color her hair was, we're gonna go with red. Because okay. I get to choose this shit. Just <laughs> long flowing red hair. Um, her armor's got a, got a natural glamour on it, so she can kind of choose what it looks like. Today we're deciding going with a black dress, because we're not going out without style. Very true. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, what I up? forgot to mention as part of his smugness, Tothiel has begun cultivating a, a Robert Downey Jr.-esque goatee. Oh! Oh, it hurts. Anyways, <laughs> I feel like You're you need to roll for fire get... spells. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Good job. Um, yep. that's about it. But she she generally kind of just doesn't say a whole lot unless she's very interested in somebody. So right now she's got nothing of interest. Just drinking. All right. So she's enjoying their drink. Uh, so Spork Arcanine, you notice your your contacts are here, but they seem to be ignoring you. <laughs> Intentionally sitting at the bar, not paying attention to you. Am I supposed to care? I don't know. I'm just merely informing you. <laughs> I just ignore my back. Oh my god. <laughs> I stand there with my arms closed. If this goes long, longer than ten minutes, let me know. Then I'm gonna do something. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Oh, I know he works. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. He's Talk trying to make me impatient and be the lower man to come big into him. <laughs> I know how this works. I'm not waiting. I can wait as long as I want. <laughs> oh my god! I'm yeah. the one here who had to leave his home. <laughs> the accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so oh good. Oh my god. <laughs> god no, Tothiel's just like, you know, this has got a nice drink. Alright. It's a decent bar. Not not paying attention to this. So Colic, oh. being a little more tense than usual, is getting impatient after five, ten minutes, however long these two are, oh. deciding to ignore each other. Yeah. So he... I'm going to walk up to Mir, or whatever your name is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to poke him right on the shoulder. <laughs> Hey, are you the one who knows about Ivan? I uh, gently him. push you away. <laughs> oh, oh, oh shit! <laughs> it begins. <laughs> Please describe yourself, then, weakling. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you want your head to get cracked, I suggest you keep your distance. And I, I have to my giant sword on my shoulder. I have no time for games. We are here for business. Now you two, stop your bakering, or whatever this is, and start talking. I look at, like, Tothiel, like, come on. I look over and I, I this feign, this look of surprise, I'm like, oh, Miro, I didn't see you down there. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Tothiel. Even uglier than I'd remembered. That's his feet. Also, what's on your face? Did you oh, like yeah. fall asleep when somebody had a like a charcoal pen? Is that what that is? Looks like yeah, a dead rat to me. Did you, did you, you really need a shower? Wash that off. I mean, I'm cleaner than you. Oh, God. You smell like what is that? Dragon flatulence. So brimstone. Jesus. He smells like yeah. brimstone. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah, why not? I mean, right. he's an alchemist. If he smells like crap. <sighs> Alright, you two boys. I've got shit to do. Uh, you guys can cut to these insults and cut to the chase, because honestly, I've seen better jokes at a drunken improv on a Thursday night. Let's just get to it, shall we? I, I'm not the one wasting time here. You're both acting like idiots. Let's continue, shall we? <laughs> yes, let's. It's funny you use the term acting when it comes to him. Oh. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you guys are all sitting around this, uh, you know, this this table over in the corner there, sizing each other up, insulting one another. Um, what you guys do know that uh, 
Miro, you and Arcanine, uh, you and Ajax have gathered some information about the security and everything of this gambling den, this this large casino, this uh, near temple to debauchery. Uh, that this is a great time. Yeah, no, that's known as the Shimmering Serpent Casino. And so what? And then so I'll tell you, and you can decide how much you want to tell them. You know, it's a three-story building with a basement. You've not been to every area in there, but the type of security that they have is it is extensive. Not only do, of course, do they have you know hired guards, but they also have golems. All of the dealers are actually undead skeletons that are specifically trained to deal cards. Fuck you. Oh, shit. There is multiple forms of magical scrying and divination and, and such things going on throughout the entirety of the place. And you know that Ivan's penthouse and office is up on the third floor, which is for VIPs only. You've not made it into the basement. You don't know what's in the basement. But the first floor is all the forms of the various gambling. Your typical ones, dice, cards. And then you've got some magical games of chance that are like roulette and such, as well as a few other more random ones. Um, the the The... The equivalent of the nickel slots at this place is literally just a guy in a table with a bag of with a magical bag that when he reaches in and pulls it out is one of six different animals and people just try to guess which animal it's going to be. The second floor is where the regular rooms are for people that want to stay. So you've got all your gambling and drinks on the first floor. You don't know what's in the basement. Third floor is VIPs, penthouse, and office. You're not, a, but you've got good information that the vault is in the third is in the basement. Okay. So. Well. So what do you want, Hill? You said you had information, my friend here. Wants to uh, give it to uh, Ivan Stretch. Does he? Has and all that. Well, that might be a challenge. <clears throat> he's Won't a, be no challenge. He's a bit of a guarded one. I mean, should you get him, I doubt it would be hard at all. You're a rather impressive specimen. But, I don't know. I mean, he's a very flex, so you know. He's probably on the third floor, that's typically where the VIPs are from what I understand. I haven't really been up there much. But I look at Cole and say, well that's one way of access. As long but as I get to him, that's all I care about. Alright, here's the deal though. If if I'm helping you get in, you're helping me with the vault. And before you even think twice, Todd Hill. Me and my partner here, we get sixty five percent of the loot, first dibs. Uh, 45 at most. 65. <laughs> it's 40% because you already told what we want to know, you idiot. No, no, I, I really didn't tell you anything. See, cool. you don't really understand. This is the, probably the most guarded casino in the, in the country. It's unbelievable the security they got, and you have no chance without me. Um... See, here's the thing, Miro. While you've been running around staying as an unknown thief, which is good for some people, and keeps you off oh, the radar. Yes, yes. And you keeps and you whole, off the radar. Oh, everybody's ever heard of me. You do realize that life comes with a bit of a expectation of subtlety and not getting caught. As I was saying, we already pro will have access. You access do to realize what? to the VIP area. Now how exactly do you plan on managing that? Because we're VIP. <laughs> according to who? Um, according to a city state. Congratulations, that rules don't apply here. Especially don't apply in there. 
Not to mention the amount of gold I brought. And your point? That's not going to get you in the VIP room. Well, that Status depends on how wealth. much gold. What else? <laughs> Status plus wealth doesn't get you in the VIP room? Uh, I, I don't think you'd understand how gambling facilities work. I don't feel like you understand how he works. VIP is well, like, for his friends. He doesn't well, just like, let in, any random yes, guys go. Well, like, why don't we just go? These two wanna, don't want to uh, cooperate at all. And it sounds like the short one's been at eye level so long with Wace. He's got a constant dick in his mouth. We know where he is. We know where to get him. Let's go. Listen, I agree with Tara here. Deco, Tara, and I, we can do this ourselves and kill him. In response, oh God. I would like to pull a flask out from under my jacket. Oh boy. And uh, take a swig and then scorch off what's her face's hair. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Lashak, you know what I have to do. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> we, guys, we've, we've been in the game for like a few isn't, minutes. Isn't using, isn't using a, um, okay. a, a flask or whatever doesn't so, provoke anyway, attacks of opportunity? If you're in combat, which you are not. <laughs> So anyways, hey anyways, any, no, you're not. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, so Milo starts to reach into his jacket and pull out a flask and you hear the bartender yell, hey, hey, Milo, none of that in here. Not like last time. It took me weeks to get the scorch marks off the wall. <laughs> I wasn't aiming for the wall. I was going for a widening shot. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> If you don't have a bar stool tall enough to reach me. If you're gonna cause trouble in here again, Myro, take it outside. Oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> Listen, if you two are gonna squabble over gold, you guys can take my share. I care not for the money for this take. Good. See he understands how it works. Now can we get down to business? Sure. I, I was fine to talk business. Is it the other ones who didn't want to actually bargain. But we counter-offered. That's what bargaining is. Again, yeah. you know, I think you have a loose grasp on how things actually work. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You've been out of the world so long you forgot how it works. I'm, I'm the one with the knowledge. I'm the one with the control. You know, your main reason for here, coming here isn't even for the goal. Your reason coming here is for what's his face of revenge. I get your revenge, you still get some of the gold, I just get the majority. Simple as that. Chirp, 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 chirp. <laughs> I keep hearing you talk, but honestly, you already told us what we need to know at this point. Why should hey. we help you if you're not willing to bargain? Feel free to try. It won't last five minutes. So at this point, a pair of men walk over to the table. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, they look, one's human, the other's a gnome. They both look pretty rough and tumble experience types. One of them kind of looks over and down and goes, I've not seen you before, looking at Kolik, like <laughs> gazing at his face. Do I know these guys? <laughs> Uh, in a scrutinizing manner. Uh, give me an intelligence check. Let's see if you can remember. God. I think I have like a negative one modifier on that. <laughs> yeah, that's a seven. Uh, no, you have no fucking clue who these two are. <laughs> Bartender, popcorn please. Oh, God. Sorry, who are you? I think he is. Looks just like the face on the poster. Don't you think yep. so, Bill? Uh, as they approach, I'm going to drop a, a dagger into my hands, uh, sneakily, slide of handing it, so that they don't see. I, I get that a lot around here. I'm I'm not Cole Ironside, the greatest champion to ever have. <laughs> oh, God, please give me a bluff check on that. <laughs> I'm not this really awesome person. No. No, if I was. <laughs> Where the hell is my bluff? <laughs> Non-existent. All right, that's a ten. <laughs> uh, oh god. The guy's like looking at you, Scaron. 
He's like, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what, Travis. One second. And he runs over to the other side of the bar while this guy, Bill, the gnome, is like staring at you. The man, Travis, comes running back after tearing something off on a far wall. And he holds up this wanted poster. One Colic Ironside. Uh, Alright. I'm gonna go up to them. Just like, put my arms over their shoulders. Like, see this face? See that face? Two totally different people. The beards. I have a longer beard than that guy does. And then I pull, I, very slightly, like, I like, start tensing up, almost not trying to choke them, but just to like show them my muscles. Dude, now, and... I don't think that those him and me are alike at all. Don't you agree? <laughs> oh, give me an intimidate check. <laughs> oh, I would love to. <laughs> Twenty six. Um. <laughs> so right. like the you know the 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 human kind of look up this and he feels on your arm shoulder and it's like, Cole Consard wanted alive for. Murder, mass destruction, and uh, reward 40,000 gold. And then he looks over at you, looks at the picture. When he says 40,000 gold, yeah. he looks at Kolik for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to put out my eyes brain a bit too. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody does a what? Um. <laughs> Oh, um, I think Kolik. I think Kolik knows Tothiel well enough that he knows exactly what Tothiel's thinking just for a second. <laughs> so at this point, these guys look and go, "Oh, yeah," and they kind of like softly crumple up the paper and put it into their like pocket. And go, my my mistake, sir. Obviously, you're you're a much more handsome looking gentleman than uh, that s scoundrel Kolik in this on that poster. I get it all the time, but hey. I know where Colt might be. See oh, him at Rug Tub's rest. <laughs> I recommend that place. And then I pat him on the butt and push him out. <laughs> they uh, they eager, they kind of like quickly hustle their way out of the uh, non stereotypically named awesome halfling inn. Um, Encounter and... one solved without violence. <laughs> Oh, Colic, so forceful. We're well on our way to those <laughs> mysteries again. <laughs> oh. I pocket the dagger and I go, uh, you didn't tell me you were worth 40k. No, uh, last time I checked, I was around 1k. Who, who knows? Who cares, right? It's not like you're gonna rat me out or anything. <laughs> right. Bluff check. <laughs> I mean, it's not. It's not a bluff check, because he wouldn't. <laughs> he'd think about it, but he'd be too scared. No, it's not. No, he would not be scared. He just wouldn't do it. <laughs> anyway, all right, so... So, yeah, there's that, you know, piece of uh, information that he's, you know, wanted. But you've got some basic inf Well, Miro has some, and Ajax have <clears throat> possibly more information about this this casino, the shimmering serpent casino that you have uh, not encountered yet. So what's your your next step here? Are you guys going to like try and scout it out a little bit? Um, or are you just like instantly trying to go and make make a plan here? What's what's your next move? Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to... Uh, I, I would uh, turn back to me and go, look, you can have most of the gold. You're right. We're here for revenge and for other matters. Uh... Tell me what you know, and uh, let's get down to business. Sixty-five percent. Sixty. Deal. <laughs> Done. Split I'll evenly. Am split evenly amongst the six of us. <laughs> oh, that's six for me. Can't let six percent among six people, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the tension. <laughs> This is gonna get along just fine. Oh, this is like the worst Ocean's Eleven ever. 
All right, so I basically spoiled the all the information that Not to mention the firebomb me. crazy bitch that uh, may or may not be watching Colic from afar. So, so <sighs> Myra spills the information to you of what type of security that you're working up against here. Um, you know, the golem guards, the undead dealers, the, you know, typical armed force, all of the magical enchantments, and the general... Is Karkin Julia Roberts? <laughs> Karkin <laughs> is Julia Roberts! <laughs> I'm sorry, I just saw that in the okay. Twitch chat. Um, uh, okay, I would, at this point, I would, hold on, let me just check something on my character sheet to make sure how something works. I would um, typically have sent out uh, some scouts in advance, and so I would want to, like, obviously I don't have all the information, but I would just make, like, a knowledge a local with, like, uh, yeah, knowledge local check, I guess. Do it. So that's not how friends in low places work. It's just a just a match up, like what I would have gathered ahead of time. Make sure that we're not being bamboozled or hoodwinked, even or hoodwinked. I'm insulted. <laughs> um, I mean, you had only heard because the you know the speed at which the messages could travel, and that it is heavily, very heavily. Uh, protected and that it is home to some of the higher stakes gamblers and uh, well-known clientele that like to come and that you've heard rumors supposedly about what sort of gambling and other activities go on in the basement um, everything mm -hmm. from deaf deaf ring fighting um, base like the equivalent of Russian roulette but with a with a rod of wonder um, ooh. <laughs> like of all the really high six scary oh, really? shit, um, that happens in the basement, supposedly, of course, none of your people have been able to get in. Um, in fact, the one that managed to get himself a job in the kitchen was quickly discovered and kicked out. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Uh, what, would, would I know like how much gold it takes to like you know secure basically be a whale as if it were a vegas casino uh so basically how much money you'd need to be floating in there with to be treated like a big deal yeah yeah um normally you think that if you could be floating in there with at least five thousand gold you're pretty good oh that's not a problem um you know because uh i get the the cover charge if you will the entrance is a hundred gold alone okay they're they're not suffering no poor the poor ass fools. No plubs allowed. But the well, no plubs allowed. What you do have though, the current in that you have, of course, about this information that Ajax, this elven warrior here, has been working as a bouncer for the place, security mm -hmm. detail, and uh, you know he's actually he has some theories, perhaps. Um, about the architecture of the place due to his vast engineering knowledge. What? Yeah, what he said. Yeah, yeah. He's He's got a lot of ranks in knowledge engineering, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what? He's, he's... By knowledge and engineering, you mean busting kids' balls and putting them out, and yes. <laughs> I mean, you've, you've got that too, you know. I mean, your dad wanted you to be an architect, but... <laughs> That didn't, yes, that didn't well, listen, pan out. I brought, enough, I brought enough funds that I could definitely secure us VIP treatment. Uh, and that way we can get our revenge when it comes to the vault and our other business. I would assume that you two have more information and more of a plan. Well, in my time working at the the casino there. Uh, I have seen that a lot of the they monitor a lot of the activity through, uh, or I've been told rather through uh, magical scrying. Um, the Walking magicians scrying. in some place sit in the pocket and look at what's going on, and if something seems suspicious, uh, they alert guards, the golems. You no, know, don't expect this to be easy. 
my question is, if Ivan is out of the picture beforehand, how much easier will it be to just walk in? It would cause a bit of a ruckus, being as the owner of the casino is missing unexpectedly. So You expect we... Ivan to be the only one dead after this? You are sorely mistaken. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, there, I, there, there was nine other people with him that day when I slew my own mother. He's not the only one who's going to get the vengeance. Well, I, listen. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Oh yeah, that I, detail. I look over at Cole, I look oh. over at Cole and I go, "Listen, of course we're going to take care of all the heads. We've been over this." And I smile and pat him on the shoulder and say, "I like your thinking." I so quickly nice. like nice. Let's so cool. throw him off. Like, don't touch me. Only Nico and Tara can. I shrug. And, and then I pat Nico ears. <laughs> oh God! Oh my God! Uh. uh Oh god, I'll never get that noise out of my head. Um, so some of the things that you don't, Ajax, that, you know, because of your, you know, your character does actually have knowledge of engineering, I know I built the character, um, that you have suspected, because you've never been able to, like, literally just have unrestricted access to look over the place, um, is that they do have, like, this really awesome, constant running fountain and pretty advanced plumbing actually there because Avalory was, was the most technologically advanced oh, city no. um, that you suspect that they ha must have so extensive amount of piping and large pipes at that running to and from this casino so that one potential way the ways that you thought of for weakness sneaking people in obviously would be either you know, getting people in as, like, new staff. Um, disguises could work, or if someone could literally come up through the water. So, I mean, that definitely sounds like something Miro would be good at. <laughs> so, what do you mean by that? Places. Oh, just your, uh, your breaking and entering skills. Oh, you clueless poor fool. <laughs> Kill did you think I have to go that old school? Like, have you never heard the stories? Oh, God. <laughs> like, like, are you that dead in the skull? Like, I thought you had at least, like, a little bit of brains in there. Is it, like, hollow? As I reach out and knock on his head. Oh, God. He doesn't touch my head. He does not touch my head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want... So. Please. <laughs> you guys have a bit of basic Please. information here. <laughs> Phil. I'm just saying, I can get in the front door, you can get in the basement. It's a double-pronged attack. Okay, you're missing an important thing here, though. You can't go anywhere inside the property. Without the mages knowing. And we and they don't care. The it doesn't mages. matter if you come up the sewers. They'll still know. They have to go so through them first. we kill the mages. Yeah. Exactly. And if we are inside, because I can gain access, because I have a lot of money, then we can kill the mages. Exactly what you intend to kill them with. I just look at Kolik. <laughs> You realize like they're not going to let you bring weapons in, right? I just look at Cole. <laughs> well, I mean, we're going to use your bare hands, go nuts. I mean... I just look at Cole. Like... <laughs> yeah, no, no. And then he says, you keep talking about me not having heard stories. I know all the information that I need. <laughs> and you obviously have no idea who Cole Ironside is. Oh, of course I know who he is. Don't think I've really heard of that many times of him taking on a dozen mages with nothing but his bare hands. Uh, you know, I mean, we, my story. We I'm took sure on, you get a few. We took uh, on no an doubts. army of yeah. ogres. Anyways, that's... so um, let's start doing. I'm gonna need. Yeah, I'm gonna need everybody to uh, roll a one d four for this dick measuring contest. Um, <laughs> All right. 
Alright. I'll something done it. <laughs> I'll fucking film <laughs> hacks. <laughs> hacks. <laughs> Anyways. So. I'm just pointing out who crit failed here. <laughs> oh, God. Well. Look, crit fails happen to everyone, okay? Um, sure so. they do. Especially <laughs> those with the smallest dicks. Oh. So, anyways. So what I'm going to go ahead here is I'm going to pick up this little party in my DM's hand, right? Thank you. And I'm going to move it over to outside the casino for some reconnaissance. <laughs> I would right. love to reconnaissance within Whoa. the casino. Railroading, guys. <laughs> railroading. Uh, I then tie soccer to the railroads and twirl my vaudevillain mustache. Yeah. And it's going, yeah. <laughs> Don't lick. Save me. <laughs> Wait, I, I should be able to escape bonds. <laughs> yeah, you are very experienced in bondage. So, anyways, um, so oh. <laughs> the god damn it. <laughs> so, the shimmering serpent casino you see before you is this like humongous building, um, three stories tall, just like I described, pure white marble walls, all of it. It looks like the entire building. It's like they must have dropped a, I don't know, 5,000, no, 10,000 square foot building of just pure marble and carved out of it. The front doors are these large gilded double doors that are about 15 feet tall and 6 feet wide for each door. <clears throat> and alongside the, the front of the building is this kind of carved image of two shining silver snakes coiling around to the sides of the door. Mm-hmm. And above the roof are this, this constant going like flaring image of a pair of serpents that are biting each other's tails in like an, inf- in like an infinity symbol. Like an Ouroboros. Like an Ouroboros. Except for there's, you know, there's, they're in like a figure There's eight. two of them, I, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And with I, big words, you know, the Shimmering Serpent. Pretty gaudy. And there's a, and there's loud, rambunctious music coming inside. from inside. Oh, I, I plan on it. Outside, you see, um, there are two heavily armed and armored guards with flanked by large stone golems. Watching the door. As people walk up, they come up, talk to them, check some things. The people then take their weapons and uh, whatever weapons they seem to have, they hand them to the guard who then like puts his hand on a part, like makes some sort of gesture to the wall, and a spot opens in the wall, and he puts the weapon in there, and the wall closes up again. Mm-hmm. Are any is anybody taking weapons in? No, you've yet to see anyone take a weapon inside. Okay. Right now, I found myself some grass to put over my face to make myself have a mustache <laughs> or a disguise. Oh my god. Oh my god. The, all right, so the grass uh, mustache. This isn't going to go well. Uh, give me a disguise check roll. Ooh. Make me roll all these things. Yeah, yeah. These are these are skill checks that Kolik has never <laughs> rolled before in his life. Yep. Disguise. Um, <laughs> so, it, before... Uh, Tothiel's, like, garb while, while Fancy was kind of muted. He's out of sight of, like, the guards and stuff. Like, I don't know, behind a tree, around a corner, somewhere. Who knows? He's going to whisper a command word, and um, his clothes are going to turn into, like, super sumptuous. Just, like, very rich-looking, pretty gaudy garb. Just, like, super swank. So Tothiel transforms into Kanye West. Um, yeah, yeah, basically, <laughs> kind of, and uh, comes out, adjusts his uh, his his cuffs, and uh, says, uh, "I'm going to secure uh, an entrance to the inside. If you guys you want know, to, that only serves to really increase the contrast." <laughs> uh. 
Are you guys going to kiss or not? <laughs> I don't. I, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm going guys, to secure me, access to the me. inside. You guys can reconnaissance, continue reconnaissance, reconnoitering. And I'm going to walk up and I'd, uh, like, I'd like, uh, is there like, so, um, I'll, I'll take my weapon spelled off and offer it to the guards and I'd like to check in. <clears throat> Guard comes like this. I haven't seen you around here before. You new to the Shimmering Serpent? Yes. All right, well, let me give you the ground rules here. You must surrender all weapons, offensive magical items, spell books, spell components. Once you're inside there, no one's allowed to draw weapons, cast spells, unless you're a member of the casino staff. It's 100 gold to get in. We, we, you hand over your items. We give you a ticket. You take it. When you come back, we return your stuff to you. For... I, take out, I take out a... Uh... Like, because ugh, gold would be, this amount of gold would be ridiculous to carry around, of course. So I, I take out, like, a ruby that's clearly worth about, like, 600 gold. And, uh, for well-paying customers, I assume there are perks. That's generally how these places work. And I'll, like, roll the ruby along my fingers. They handle all that inside. My job here is to make sure that you get in without anything dreadful on you. I offer him my, uh, my, um, weapon belt. He takes it, and, uh, it's like, and, it's like, alright, put your arms over, gotta check you over for hidden weapons. Raise my arms. Are you hiding any weapons? No. Okay. He finds no weapons. <laughs> <laughs> I was assuming... Wow. Wait, uh, we'll 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 find bluff that. check. But <laughs> well, so I asked if yeah, you were no, if you were if you were hiding any weapons, I would just need you to make a sleight of hand check as opposed to his perception to try and find uh, them. I'll have like one dagger. All right, then make a sleight of hand it. check. Okay. He can, uh, where do you have the dagger? Um, like in a uh, little sheath like that runs along the small of my back like where my belt would go so he does the whole like patting things down and uh drops these little like lenses over his eyes and so oh, and oh finds, finds the dagger on your back and gives you a knowing look and holds out his hand <laughs> I, I take it and i hand it to him right then all right, he gets you the little token. Um, so I just bring this to you when I need them back when I leave. When you're leaving, yes, sir. Very well. All right, well, uh, he takes you know your payment and says, "Welcome to the Shimmering Serpent," and uh, like <clears throat> gestures and the doors crack open and allowing you to enter. I walk in, like I own the place. <laughs> uh, so you strut into the room, and this place is extravagant. And the first thing you see when you come in is this gigantic fountain that, like, seems to have the water magically controlled to go up over something and come down in a waterfall. Mm -hmm. um, it's and the water changes, like, the water is constantly shifting through a different rainbow of colors. On um, the left wing of the building you see tons of games of chance people drinking on the uh, right wing you see there's stage entertainment where the actual bar is some d like dancers and other performers and there's a you know grand staircase in the back with a uh, like counter if you will in front of it with like a couple finely well dressed individuals like manning it you would guess that would be like the registration desk if anyone's wanting to rent a room Okay. Is anyone uh, is anyone else going in with Topiel or is it just Topiel? Uh, I'll go in with Topiel. All right. Same procedure. Um, Are you hiding just, any weapons? Uh, full, no. I'll okay. hand them the rapier. Full dis full disclosure, Lashok. Um, like I have magical items that conceal thief gear. Would they have picked that up as well? Um, no. Okay. If it was magical gear that lets you cast offensive spells or turns into a weapon, then that would have picked up in their search. 
I mean, does the Blight Crown count? Oh, shit. The Blight Crown's a little outside their standard detection, so... Okay, then no, don't detect <laughs> You anything. son of a bitch. <laughs> but, you know, you're a little worried about the Blight Crown yourself, so... Oh, I mean, I, yeah. I, yeah I, I still keep it with me. I mean, he's good for so, a talk every now and then. Oh, God. So you and Taro, you know, strut in there in your fine clothes. Um... And, you know, it's a really fancy-looking place. Now, on the pillars, when you walk in, are tons of images of faces with, like, black eyes, broken noses, missing teeth, blood on their faces. Like, they're like, they're, they're like illusions. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and there is words, it's like, you know, and it just says rule breakers. Oh. <clears throat> I, I smile and, and make notes. Immediately, a very, very pretty and uh, a, a very pretty half orc woman approaches you in a very like shimmering, slender silver dress, and uh, approaches you both and says, "Welcome, sir and lady, to the Shimmering Serpent Casino. I'm Esmeralda. I am the hostess of tonight. How can I help you guys?" Uh, well, uh, I interested in your establishment i'd like to probably book a room and uh find out what services you offer oh well and i say this while like looking around sort of interestedly at the surroundings very sort of i don't know air of being a, a well-off whale who has come to you know apply my trade well, sir, she says, like, doing the whole, like, reaching out and, like, gently, like, ta like, touch touching your shoulder with a, you know, um, type talks of, well, thanks to our very special status here in the city, thanks to our owner and founder, Ivan Strench's position as a chancellor on the city state's council, we have, how you could say, the casino's lands are almost treated as, like, without international border to them. Uh, so we can typically apply to any taste you may choose. Anything that we can cater to any taste you may have. Oh, shit. For the right price. <laughs> of course. And she winks at Tara. <laughs> 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 so if you would like a room, please come right this way. And she, like, you know... Steps Let her, like, take my arm. She know? steps between you and takes both of your arms and starts, like, okay. escorting you over there. Yep. Um, and you guys are right there, and, uh, you know, you see this, you know, large registration desk with several fine-dressed people and these shining, like, you know, again, these and metal two metal golems behind the desk. Each one is looks like they've been enchanted or painted or whatever to look shiny and shimmering silver. Okay. And uh, there's a halfling man standing on top of a stool behind the desk. Um, like he's like balancing on one foot and occasionally doing like an acrobatic thing or whatever. And he goes, welcome, welcome. Oh, would you Hello? like to be registering for a room? My name yes. is Bitrim and I'll be glad to help you. Yeah. That would be quite, uh, that would be my wish for this evening. Well, very well. I mean, we have basic rooms. We have, uh, oh, room. we I, have... Laugh. I, I, I laugh very dismissively when he says basic room. Oh, well, we also have uh, romantic honeymoon suites and gives you both a wink. Um, no, no, nothing like that. But, uh... Oh, but can we though? <laughs> <laughs> I, I look over at Tara and I pat her on the arm, if you insist. Well, we also do have, you know, um, I guess you could say, like, the, 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 we also have some various suites, and the, what we like to call the ambassador's package. Oh, ambassador, you say. Funny you should mention that. Well, and, the, the, and of course, what we then refer to call the throne rooms, which is our most expensive and luxurious lodgings available. 
How much? They are a thousand gold a night. I pull out two uh, sapphires, big ass sapphires. That would equal about a thousand GP. Huh? For one night, then? So she picks, she, well, picks, she picks them up and like puts a little magic. Of course, extend the stay. <laughs> Where's Venris when you need to spend gold? Nice. Um, <laughs> it's like well. And looks them over and takes them there and uh, hands you, you know, um, a, hands you each a copy of the same key and says, well, here you go. This will be your room, one of the, the king suites. You have the Stormhaven room. Um, and if you don't mind, Esmeralda, there will give you a tour and show you to where your room is. That would be wonderful. I heard nice. here's some, some great things that happen here. Oh, Anything to your heart's desire can happen here. And uh, oh, they begin to, to, to lead you up to a, uh, you know, on a tour of the place, show you the room. Meanwhile... Wait, do we, have, do we have to sign a register? You didn't have to sign anything. Okay, fair enough. Um, and, you know, you guys made the tour. Meanwhile, with the rest of the uh, cast outside, what are you doing while he's <clears throat> gone in to... Uh, scout out the inside and attempt to use what clout he and money he has. Is there any kind of like ventilation of any kind? Um, there is not direct ventilation, but there are windows. Like this sort of place uses a lot of magic to handle its various ways of keeping the air fresh and clean. The closest thing to ventilation would actually be the chimney from the stove in the kitchens. Okay. And how high up are the windows and how reinforced do they look? Uh, the windows, the lowest level windows are about seven feet up and they look like just br big, bright, stained glass of luxuriousness. They don't, how reinforced they are, they don't look that physically reinforced, but you would suspect that there's some base levels, uh, base levels and beyond magic that keep them from just generally shattering. The next right. level, next level windows are up on the second and third floor. The roof um, looks like it has a flat roof that you suspect that people could go up on top of for like fancy events or whatever. Uh, you I'll even let heard? You finish, but I'm gonna be back in like three minutes. I'm gonna okay. get something to eat. Okay. Um, you you've even heard rumors, but you haven't been that there's a pool on the roof. Uh, Ooh. <clears throat> There's now, always a pool on the roof. Yeah, there's always a pool on the roof. Now, Ajax has told you that there is a servant's, like, you know, a worker's entrance over on the back side of the building. Um, that you just have to get, you know, there's some guards to check you for making sure that you are actually someone who belongs there. But for ventilation, there is a chimney. And you know that, again, that this place does have sewer piping coming to it. Which is one of the, the unique features of this city is that they have plumbing, advanced plumbing. Okay. How high up is the roof? Uh, this building's three stories tall, so you would say about thirty-five, forty feet. I should clarify: if I were to use jump, the spell, would I be able to get high enough to get onto the roof? Oh dear God! <clears throat> Let me see. Using the jump spell. <laughs> That's a classic. Oh God! Plus thirty at ninth level. Whew. That's quite. That's a tough call. Like the freaking stained windows that are seven feet up and almost three times your height as is. You want to go three stories? What if you don't make it? <laughs> you're just... you're going to fall three stories to the ground. Yeah. Except you don't make it up three stories. You're going to make it about one. So, you're fall one. so, okay. In order to get to jump up 35 feet, um, that's a... Oh, jeez. Even with, like... Huh. Standing or... Running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably running. 
that's that is a astronomically high number. Um, like for example, to jump five feet higher than your normal vertical reach is a DC twenty jump check or acrobatics check. Okay. So like So basically I'd have to like not twenty it. You would Well um Nat twenty or or you could do the, if you've got some good climbing on you too, or like a spider climb ability, you could do like Assassin's Creed style, hop up so many feet, find the perch, hop up some more. No. I don't know. I wasn't but, quite sure exactly how high jump would let me go, so Um it would let you, and you know, it, beyond... Do I know if the roof is patrolled at all, or is it unpatrolled? Uh, from what you know, the roof is generally not patrolled, because it's, like, it's the only VIP access, so... Okay. I think there's really only one thing to do, then. Which is? Well, quite simple. <laughs> Why? <laughs> All right, so you're just going to fly, like, right here, right now, fly to the roof. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, Colic, Ajax, Neko, you just watch the little halfling, look up the building, chug a potion, <laughs> and just fly to the roof of the what? building. Just all of a sudden. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just say he does I would like to wave time. condescendingly on my way up. <laughs> right, I'm going to see when he flies back down. Oh, well, what I mean by flies back down is gets chucked back down. Uh, as awkward as this is going to sound while you're flying, give me a stealth check. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he's the Harry Potter flying car. Ba -da -ba -da. Back. Ba -da. Ba -da. All right, so ba -da -ba -da. Ba -da -ba -da. you uh, chug your potion and fly your way to the top of the building. No one notices. <laughs> um... You kind of at the moment no but no alarm has been raised and no one has said anything. So if you have been noticed, it's not you're not aware. It's not noticeable if he's been noticed. Yes, it's not noticeable if he's been noticed. Noticing me, noticing you. Uh, on his way up, though, he does pull out a second potion, spritz over his face, which makes his mouth silver, and yells, Witness me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> what a day! What a lovely day! So, oh, you, for later. so you get there, and sure enough, there is a pool up here on the roof. Um, right. You land up there and immediately kind of duck into a corner, and there is a large actually because it's it's you know late afternoon at this point it's not like horribly dark but you get up there and kind of land and immediately look around and see that there's there's you know six or seven people lounging about on this roof um how close am i to the towel cart you are right next to the towel cart <laughs> sweet i would like to point... I would like to strip down to the waist and then wrap a towel around me and casually walk inside. At this point, at this point, he sees me and Tara on our tour of the pool area. <laughs> Not yet, but I like this. Flies up, land next to the book art, strips naked, grabs a towel, <laughs> no, 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 just, just to the just to the waist, just to the waist, and wraps a towel around his waist. Still has yeah. his boots on. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, some weird shit happens Dude, in the I'm Shimmering Serpent. Wear boots. Yeah, he's barefoot all the time. What happens in the casino? So, um, Ajax, uh, Neko, Kolik, um, what's the... Uh, are you guys doing anything, or are you just waiting for... <laughs> for waiting? Oh, <laughs> he's gonna see come if he back. ends up coming back. Neko, all right. um, well, I was gonna go to some pawn shop, uh, some place that sells, like, masks, you know, clothing. I was um, hoping you could do the negotiating for me. Because, you know, I'm pretty famous around here. <laughs> well, but surely everyone wants to give you things for free. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I don't think I'm yeah, that type like of famous. <laughs> Let me give you this free piercing. 
Well, well how about it? Yeah. Yeah. All Good right. For you. Um, All right. So you're able to go off and easily like spend some time finding, like what type of clothing and masks are you looking for? Um, clown masks. Oh god. <laughs> you got payday. Oh no, I'm totally getting a, a little, a kitty mask. It's gonna be great. <laughs> He's looking. No, no, no. They're looking for masks of um, Georg and Damien and uh, other no. heads of state. Oh no! Uh, so I want that... a George Clooney mask. Uh, I'm looking for an Albert mask, actually. Oh well, you find an Albert mask, but immediately turn and Neko is holding up a kitty cat mask, and looking at you with those big cat-like eyes. You better Doctor. roll diplomacy roll. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right. I mean, it would match your armor. That's true. <laughs> My Nico armor. Whoa. Nico. For a brief... Oh, Jesus. 32 diplomacy. <laughs> I look me. at the owlbear mask. I look at the cat ears. I take the cat ears. <laughs> so Very how... sad. Was... <laughs> so... I'm ashamed of you right now. Oh, that was a great diplomacy check. Um, So... At this point, it looks you know, so good on you, and it does match your armor. You are now the cat knight. I am the cat that walks. Uh, other than that, uh, what other disguises should I have? <laughs> Wait, this Colic? <laughs> oh, so Colic doesn't suffer penalties for raging in his armor. No, anyone can rage in the uh, in the armor that they're proficient with. That has rage. Um, Kitty cat, snuffle dove. What else should I buy? Oh my god! <laughs> Excuse me while I vomit. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Nico, maybe maybe some more baggy clothes to hide your imposing physique. But I all right. Let's, <laughs> let's buy some overalls. <laughs> overalls. <laughs> um. What? All right. So you uh are able to find some large baggy clothing that will kind of you know hang loose and not show off how big armored and arms and everything Kolik is as much. So Neko's now walking down the street with, like, the weirdest looking, you know, <laughs> like, I'm picturing, like, Andre the Giant in the Holocaust cloak from uh, Princess Bride, but with a cat mask on. Um, <laughs> I'm picturing, like, a sweatsuit I'm wearing right now. A sweat? This is like a giant a sweatsuit. Suit. A tracksuit. Yeah. A one-e. A one oh, God. I'm just so happy. So happy. <sighs> Right then. So and we're gonna walk back as I'm benching Nico. <laughs> benching Nico. Do some curls, maybe. All right. So you re approach your. Uh... Oh, jeez. So. You. Uh... So meanwhile, on the inside. Uh, yeah. Sure enough, as you've been going on the tour and you're shown where all the games are and where the normal rooms are, and you get taken to the third floor, um, they show you where the mm -hmm. VIP lounge is. Um, Very nice. Uh, and you know where your room is and how your key works and everything. And the uh, they show you also to the stairs that lead up to the pool on the roof. It's at this time that the door opens and the Naked to the waist, you know, shirtless with a towel wrapped around his waist, Miro comes just strutting through the door that led from the pool, the pool area. I give like a non-visible sign of acknowledgement, little tip of the hat that's... type deal. Enjoy your stay. It's beautiful. Cool. <laughs> just exquisite. Good like carry on. <laughs> Uh, you know, as well as, like, kind of looks at you, like, for a brief moment, like, trying to figure out if she knows who you are, shakes her head and goes back to entertaining, uh, you know, Tara and, uh, Tothiel and shows you to your room. Um, you know, it's called the Stormhaven, the Stormhaven room of our king suites. And, uh, you know, open up and inside it's, like, super 
it literally looks like a throne room, but instead of like, but in the bed is made to look almost in the shape of a humongous, gigantic throne, but it's a bed. And there are armored suits along the wall, giant tapestry of like armored soldiers, like paladins and knights fighting off like a large red dragon and all of these ridiculous like World accommodations. Yeah, Esmeralda, yeah. are these armors real? Oh no, they are not real. They're merely decoration. Uh, we don't. We are very careful of what sort of, of weapons and equipment we allow into the building. Oh, I was about to ask, uh, what happens to all the weapons that get hacked in? I normally don't worry as much, but that rapier is a family heirloom. And I don't really want to lose it. Oh well, it's actually quite. Uh, it's quite an advanced magical enchantment, from what I'm told, that allows them to store it in some sort of. Magical pocket. I'm afraid I'm not a mage and don't know these things. Oh, no, I, I completely understand. It's beyond me, too. I normally ask Topiel about all these things. <laughs> Make a bluff check. <laughs> oh, boy. As you uh... are a mage. <laughs> uh, it's fine. I get to substitute comedy for this. This is the best. Oh, God. <laughs> Which is... <laughs> Wow, you did even make your lies sound like a joke, so that's even perfect. Um, <laughs> since you're a cleric bard, you're the biggest monstrosity known to man. Um, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Um, I'm an attractive monstrosity, thank you. And she kind of just laughs and, and goes, oh, I complete, thank you, I'm, I always hate when I'm made to feel ignorant. And, you know, kind of like smiles and gives you a gentle pat on the soldier, on the, the shoulder. Uh. I so just kind of nudge. I kind of nudge. You go, honey. You do whatever you want. You work that dress well. <laughs> oh God. God. <laughs> I have a I have a question, Rashad, and this pertains to um, my other companion. Mm hmm. And not not Leah. Um. So since it's a very powerful sentient magic item, can it? tell what other magic is going on around it it chooses what it does or doesn't tell you and most of the time it just tells you it's thirsty <laughs> okay so i am in my mind because of course it'd be weird to say it out loud i'm going to talk to it and say there's a good possibility you're you will get to drink if you tell me what type of magical surveillance is looking at us right now this I do not know. I merely know the thirst. It has been too long, Tothiel. I need to drink. Well, you might just have to uh, go go thirsty a little longer if you're not going to share any information. Tothiel, need you to make a will save. Oh boy, <laughs> you've been through this dance a few times. <laughs> yeah, we all have. <laughs> Um, let me find Will. Um... Under defenses. Yep. Oh, that's not a great save. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not a great save at all. Well, let's see it. Please fail. Please fail. The nat 20! Oh, wow! wow. <laughs> so you feel it once again, it's Will attempting to impose itself on you. Um, and again, this is a game, a dance you've done many times and the kind of like reassert your dominance you let it think it's winning for a moment that it's kind of like yes you will that girl right there the half orc Le let me loose let me complete let me drain her of all of her essence and in the moment that it sounds super excited you're just like no and it just like stops dead in its tracks in, in your mind because you were in control the whole time. What? Our demon items are going to be a wild card in this. <laughs> Holy shit. I say, you share information, get fed. I cannot detect such things. I could tell you well, how many people are in here. That's good to know I how can... many people are in the casino right now. 413. talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I pay, pay attention to what's going on again. 
Oh. All right, so she goes, well, if you need anything else, don't hesitate to call. And gestures, like, over on the table, there is a bell. It's like, if you ring that bell while within the room, it will alert any of our serving staff that will come up and uh, see to your needs. And do remember, what the are we talking about? Well, at the Shimming Serpent, anything is available if you have the if you can pay its price. What about you, you cute little fruit tart? Oh, my God, that depends on what you want me for. I'll uh, ring that bell anytime for you. Oh God, I'm <laughs> so I, glad I scraped, Cole I scraped here. my cups again, and I'm <laughs> looking kind of making myself look self-important. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm like. Well, being a, a businessman and very much like Ivan, a, a prominent member of a burge, of a, a newer city state, of course, not as well established as Avery, would there be an opportunity to meet with Ivan? Well, I mean, I know that uh, Mr. Ivan does tend to like to, uh, I guess you could say, do a bit of uh, mingling with the VIPs. Him and his his close group of friends that are here. Typically, every evening they'll be in the VIP lounge, drinks and gambling with each other and uh, jesting with the other guests. So, I would not see why he would not be here tonight, like any other night. As as she says this in my mind, I say to the crown, see, important friends, many people. <laughs> oh God. God, you're gonna kill. And I nod. You're gonna kill Steel from Colic, just like you did. <laughs> I swear just like God. you did to Haber. And... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I nod and say thank you. I think that'll be all for now. <clears throat> we may spend some time perusing your fine city before the evening's entertainments. By all means, and she. Uh... You know, bows and exits. The Do you room. have a concierge that could point out points of interest? Oh yes, actually, just ask for one at the desk, and they'll be able to help you. Thank you. So, Myra, where are you going? <laughs> 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 I have to, you're inside. You flew up on the roof. You're walking around in a towel on the third mm -hmm. floor. Where are you going? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to find one of the basic rooms which is unlocked. Okay. Or at so least unattended. So you go down Slip to the... in there and put my stuff back on. So you go down to the second floor. Yes. All right. Um, make a perception check for me. Okay. So immediately as you come down there, you actually happen to notice someone, uh, one of the housekeeping service, you know, go through, clean the room... That is empty out and walk away, and the door doesn't quite shut all the way, and you're able to kind of uh, slip in there oh, after them. After they move on to another another area. I just put my stuff back on so I look like a normal person instead of a recently swimming person. Recently did swimming actually, person. <laughs> who did actually get in the pool, so just came out just looking dry as bone. I splashed some water in my face. If she was tanning. <laughs> oh, you yeah, yeah. At night? It's not night it's yet. It's not night yet. It's like mid-afternoon. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. he said it's like 4 o'clock at the latest. <laughs> yeah, it details. Oh, uh, wait, question, LeShock. Have I found a way without Rob Tug to take the crown off? Nope. Okay. And then once I'm dressed like an old person, I want to just head down to the game rooms. Okay. You head on down to the game rooms. You gonna, like, mingle with the crowd, play a game of chance or two, or... Yeah. All right. So you go down and begin just, you know, losing yourself in the crowd. Um, so you guys then, so then Tafiel and Tara, are you guys going to then, they, where are you going from here? Are you going to look around the place a bit more? Or are you going to go out, find the concierge and go meet up and inform everything else to the party? What's your plan? That would be my, the, the latter is my plan. Okay. Probably, yeah. All right. So you just go in there, like, um, the, the desk, they actually hand you, um, a, basically a, a map with, you know, points to shops, diners, entertainment, and all that around the area. You'll, you notice, you know, quickly that this map only extends a few blocks from around the casino. Like, they don't want you to go too far away. Mm. Of course. 
Because, you know, everything you really need is here. Well, of course. Good business. Because remember, anything's available if you have the right pr if you can pay the price. I wonder how much it would cost me to just let me kill Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh. business is business. A lot, probably. <laughs> mm. So, you guys go out, and you know you've been in there. Eh, not even. I would say barely, barely an hour. Um, an hour? Yeah. Oh God! All right. I mean, you guys went off shopping. You know, the only one who did nothing was Ajax. He just kind of sat around and waited. Um, <laughs> Maybe he did his job for once. Oh, I mean, I yeah, that's. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, you know. He does his job well. He gets paid to throw people out. You know. My job is simple. Yeah, that that those pictures of rule breakers. He's responsible for a few of those. Um, a few. So, you know, you all minus Miro, who is currently mingling inside, are meet back up out in the spot that you did. Um, and Kolik is wearing like the ugliest. Old man tracksuit you can imagine in a cat mask. As I walk up to him, I say, "What the fuck are you wearing?" Guys, I found a disguise. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, since uh -oh. since uh, Neko pretty much dressed you, Stalker, can you give me a disguise check on how well you've disguised Kolik in this outfit? All right. <laughs> 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 Wow, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> oh my god. So you're not one on the disguise check. <laughs> you were too busy like feeling up his muscles to properly really disguise him. So like this is a ill fitting like the swords are sticking like the you know the handles of the swords are st pushing up on the tracksuit that they put over top of the swords. Like, this is the most awkward looking fucking thing you've ever seen. <laughs> I just, I shake my head, and I, I mo I'm like, Cole, come here, and I take him somewhere, and I, I... do my best to fix this. Get, get the, <laughs> Top, you'll get the grass mustache off his face. I don't know why you kept that. <laughs> I, I, so, I'm gonna make a disguise check now. People recognize me because of the beard. Come on. <laughs> And the Colic logic. Fix this, this whole mess. Did um, I get all my things back as we head out? Yes. As you guys exit out, yeah. you hand them back the token that they gave you, and they return all of your items. Okay. Okay. So you work with what you got here, and are you know? Oh uh, the weirdest thing is he kept the grass mustache on underneath the cat mask, like. That doesn't even make sense. Um. <laughs> and so it's probably like it's probably like somewhat hardened to his face at this point, right? So I just grab it and rip it off. <laughs> you hear a little bit of a moan coming out of Kolik. Mm. <laughs> oh. oh god. Oh. <laughs> so you're all together. Kolik is now slightly more um, disguised with just, now it looks like he's just wearing a large bulky cloak instead of a track suit. How do I look, guys? Terrible. Uh... It looks like I'm ready to fuck shit up. Yes, that you do, dear. How did Miro get on the roof? Or how did he get hit in there in the first place? He flew. He flew to the roof. <laughs> and somehow no one saw him do it. I mean, I'm a halfling. They are rather small. Very discreet. I mean, three and a half feet is not small enough that no one's going to know. Only three feet tall. <laughs> small compared to Kolik. Yeah. <laughs> three feet, 34 pounds. No. So, did you guys find Ivan? We found where he's going to be. He and looked we like have access room. to him. All right. If we go and get you a better disguise, <laughs> and... we might be able to get you inside. I could just fly him on the roof. That I, I like that plan. I've never flown before. I, you'll love it. it. It's like everything you ever want. And I you spell get to constitution your save. What's that? Hmm? I spell constitution save. What? 
Air sickness. Air sickness. <laughs> oh, go bingo. Oh. <laughs> go bingo. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so Miro's on the inside doing God knows what. I'm gambling. So, where where's the, the, the plan evolving from here? You need to get... <laughs> ideally, you need to get Kolik into the VIP room before any guards can react while simultaneously getting a group of you to the vault. So I have an idea. What's that? Oh yeah. And I, I looked at Tothio and I'm like, your spies, they mentioned that there might be some underground fighting going down in the basement. Correct? Yep. So if you were to sponsor, or if you were to join this ring and sponsor a fighter, probably get a group of us to go down there. I could. It's a good plan. And I look over to um, Kawak and I shrug and say, It looks like he's been itching for a fight. Oh, this has been a long time coming. And if we play our cards right, might be able to get Man down there as well. Ooh. We, we might not even go that far. We send Kawak downstairs. And he wins a couple fights, I can just say I want him upstairs in the VIP room and then, well, let him loose. <laughs> <laughs> um This is why I love you, babe. I'm also <laughs> sure I'm also sure if I were to bring such a person as or if we came up with an identity for Kolik, because I don't think we should go up to Ivan and say Kolik's here. That might not be a great idea. But if I were to bring such a great fighter, Ivan might personally want to watch the match. Yeah, he's Pede Italian sides. Let's go. I would like the nickname Iron Beard or Strong Jaw. <laughs> Iron Beard. Just combine the two. Can anyone please cast Iron Beard on him? Because that's an actual spell. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> yes, it, it is. is. Do you know what the best part about it is? It allows you to make an attack with your Iron Beard. Oh my god. <laughs> I was legitimately considering it. That, that has to be made up. That can't be true. Uh, no, it's no, it's a real spell. <laughs> I... I, 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 I I look at that spell every time I go through a cleric spell list, I go, maybe. One, <laughs> one of these days? <laughs> maybe, Tara Today's that day. maybe Tara has Iron Beard. Not today. <laughs> Can be used as a weapon equivalent to cold iron irons, iron, iron armor spikes. <laughs> so that means yeah. he can hit someone wow. for, like, you know... I don't know, I believe it's uh, 1d4 or 1d6 plus strength <laughs> modifier damage with his beard. Oh my god. I, I'll, I'll say... <laughs> we're well, making it also makes it harder to talk. That's like the most the insulting group. attack ever. Like, I'll say to the group... My beard. I'll say to the group, it would be suspicious if I just arrived with a fighter, so I'll probably have to mingle this evening and tell Ivan that I can get a fighter here within the next day or so. Well, you know. do you do also have a bouncer guard who works there who could probably vouch for someone to enter into any fighting. That's true. Mm. Ajax does work there and for, has worked there for a few months now, and uh, he himself is no slouch when it comes to a fight. I flex my bicep. <laughs> uh, Kolek, do you, do you have anything around your neck tonight? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> a noose. Do you have a, do you have a necklace, hun? Uh, why? I, what? <laughs> I he doesn't understand what you. He's not picking up what you're putting down. This is the part where you remember that he's not very smart, and you're just in it for the rock and hard bod. <laughs> <laughs> this holds. Hold still for a second. I'm gonna check to see if he has a neck piece on or any sort of amulet. Are you wearing any sort of magical amulet, Colic? No, I am not. Okay. Look here. I think you might need this more than I do tonight. And I take off uh, my little um. What's it called? 
Uh, Golden Bane Scarab, and I put it on him, and I say, if we're fighting golems tonight, you need this more than I do. You have a fucking Ooh. Golem Bane Scarab, god <laughs> <laughs> Please describe to me what this thing does. Uh, as a standard action, you detect the golems nearby, and it also mitigates the damage resistance golems may have. All I have to say, LeShock, is get fucked on. <laughs> he had no idea, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> yeah, I pin it on his ugly ass tracksuit. <laughs> there you go. Look, I also have a cap of cod that I really been wanting to use. <clears throat> I want to turn into a fish. <laughs> Wait, what? I just like, I want to slap Coley. In the middle of this place where I'm at, I'm gonna activate it. <laughs> you turn. <laughs> um. So Cola turns into, and I repeat this, you need to guys pay attention to my words, a literal huge size cod. And I mean oh huge God. size, meaning like 16 foot long giant Jesus. fish. <laughs> and is currently flapping around on the ground. And people are staring. I, I, I look to the others and say, does he always do this? No one, wants, no yeah. one has ever Guys, seen him do this really before. Right <laughs> you can't talk. You, they just hear <laughs> bump, 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 bump. <laughs> You're starting. Uh, by the way, you're, you're starting to suffocate, I, Phil. <laughs> I'm passing. I I, no, 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 I'm passing water on him because I. No, I kick the fish and I'm like, turn back, you dumb fuck. <laughs> <laughs> One second. That's a very nice trick. That. that mm. <laughs> oh no no! Don't coddle him. He needs to know. All right, I deactivate it. All right, you t you're laying on the ground as normal you again. Sorry, I'm I actually just feel really hungry weird. now. <laughs> that fish looked tasty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've tasted me long so, before that. Oh, would that be cannibalism God. technically? Was that what? Is that no. cannibalism or is that eating fish? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Well, technically, I'm not a human anyway. So Cole, can you make yourself can't, smaller can't as a fish? Or is it always, are you always a big giant fish? I think I'm always a big giant fish. I, I look, I, wait, has he ever activated it before? No, that's the first time he's ever <laughs> activated it. That's why he didn't realize he'd start suffocating on land. <laughs> okay. Okay. So... You guys Go have ahead. these few ideas of getting them into some, like, you know, hey, I want to see some fighting, bring in a fighter. Yeah, that's our plan. All right. So, all right, you know, and it's also, Ajax, you're supposed to work a shift tonight, so seems as good a time as any. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, yes, I will go to work. So you basically... I honestly had no idea I was still working there. Oh yeah, yeah, you've been maintaining that cover for a bit. You know, you guys are expect you're expecting. Okay. I mean, for one, they actually pay fairly decently, um, and you get to beat people up, like. Hey, yeah. getting paid to beat people—that's pretty good. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, but you're, you guys are assuming that the payoff from the vault job will be pretty spectacular. Um, so, you know, you guys pass there and. Uh, so, Col Col uh, Tothiel and Terry, you guys are going, are, how are you, br who, I'm sorry, who is bringing in Colic and how? Are you doing it through, like, Ajax? I think we're doing it, I think we're doing it through the, well, if we can get him in as a fighter, we're going to do it through Ajax. Okay. So. Um, and, but also, in the, at some point, when we're back in the room, or whatever, I want to use my new magical item. The treasure finding goggles? Yes. Okay. Wait. Treasure finding goggles? Yes. Rem uh, remind me how those work. I am pulling them up. Uh... So, why that, what you do find out is like, you're like, hey, what about seeing some fighting? Because I've got a friend who, blah, blah. And they're from you. Oh yes, actually, we have regular um, fights when people um, want to see them. And uh, you know, just to be warned that uh, a lot of our patrons do like to pay to see a full-fledged fight to the death. So if you're bringing a friend in for that, then uh, 
Well, that will be his own risk that he'll be taking. I smirk. Okay, uh, so, uh, sturdy but plain goggles help the wearer locate secret doors and coins and identify treasure. While wearing these goggles, the wearer can use detect secret doors at will. The goggles do not aid in determining how secret doors are open. Once per day, on command, the wearer gains the ability to locate object as per the spell, but only detect 100 or more coins in a small area. Okay. Um, um, well, the goggles so don't I'm... find you any hidden doors in your room. Damn. Okay. I, I would scan, like, the whole, the whole, up, like, maybe not the whole upstairs, but as much as I could surreptitiously. Okay. Um, you're not able to find any hidden doors immediately, like, in the public areas of upstairs. Okay. So... You go in there like, yeah, well, you know, if you have someone to, to bring in, just know that we provide the weapons and equipment. So when they come to ensure a fair fight. So when they come in, they will not be allowed to bring anything but the simple set of clothes upon them. Okay. So. Seems fair. They give you know they they give you the, the that information and. Uh... But we could probably also just to the other group and I would have mentioned this before. <laughs> if Ajax works security, I mean he could probably help smuggle our weapons in. Easily, I need my Maybe not easily. Betsy at vicinity at least. But hold on a second. They they would definitely would be able to tell the difference between one of their swords and your personal sword. Well, no, but you could always just carry an extra weapon on you cuz you when you're working are allowed to carry a weapon, allowed to, to carry your gear. Yeah. But you'll just carry like six extra weapons. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just stuff them under my subtle. shirt. So you know. All right, so they tell me this? Yeah. So right, basically I'll, ha I'll hand Ajax my Betsy sword. <laughs> And faithful. say, I want this sword back when I get my kill. I, I have to, and I ask, why do you call this weapon Betsy? Idiot. Betsy was a cow I met a while back. So I thought it would be funny to call it my sword Betsy. However, <laughs> it's not that funny anymore because on the day I carried Betsy... I slayed my mother with my own two hands. Jesus Christ. I, I just look at you and <laughs> walk away with it. <laughs> I'm also going to give him my uh, my rapier and uh, pistol crossbow. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a lot for him to carry in a... No, uh, it's not. In, it's in, not. No, no, I don't think it is. Okay, for starters, he literally has an oversized... Uh, like a large size elven curve blade, like it's it's has. massive. He's carrying an anime Look. weapon, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm maybe really he's jealous like of. Like a Ricky Rest, like maybe he just likes to go geared out, you know, be prepared for <laughs> anything. Just, I've like just the glue the rapiers on; it's fine. Yeah. Just glue be like Kylo Ren's lightsaber. Just stick it on the handle. <laughs> <Exactly. and laughs> yeah, a couple rapiers off the side. That's fine. You have my keen rapier and just glue yeah, it on there. Let me just glue weapons to this one weapon <laughs> swing it around. God. So <laughs> you make the Omega weapon. Got it. <laughs> like th this is a great sword double hand crossbow double <laughs> rapier blade. It's, it's a weapon to surpass metal gear. A weapon to <laughs> surpass metal gear. God. So okay, so you load him up with, you know, this equipment. Um and uh, you go to work the door, and you know you're checking people. Oh, so in now, now I'm I'm one of those guards that yes pats people down. Mm -hmm. Extra weapon. Okay. And if he's the one who pats people down, why can't we just walk in with our weapons? While well, there is going? another. There are two guards there, okay. so you'd have yeah. to be subtle about it. Right, right. Quick question. Um, yes. Is smoking allowed inside the casino? Everything's allowed inside the casino. <laughs> Just double checking. If we wait for the other Except guard weapons. for a bio break, weapons aren't allowed. Say that. Say that. Say that again, Arcanine. Right I said, um, if we wait for the guard next to me to have a bio break, I could uh, motion the others to come in when there's only me 
Oh. So you're going to, like, actually get him to drink a bunch of either water or alcohol while on shift, so well, he has to run off and use the bathroom? The shift is pretty long. Yeah, that's pretty fair. Pretty impressive to make it through it without okay. a bio so okay, so Milo's Milo's living it up on the inside there, gambling with other <laughs> people's. Left. No, he's been. I, I I'm sorry. I'm, this might be me assuming as a GM, but I'm picturing him pickpocketing people and gambling with their money. Well, to make some rolls for that. <laughs> I, definitely make some rolls for, for, for now. For now, it's just good because you know it works. Um, so you up there. He goes, he's like, hey man, you want to try to see if I'm winning? Sure. What do I roll? Just give me a sleight of hand for the fuck of it. All right. You're not winning big because you know that would draw attention. But, you know, like if you suddenly were a high roller winning big, but you're, 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 you're like calculating going about it. Like, okay, I'll win this time and lose a bit more. So I'll just keep coming out slightly ahead. Um, Works for me. Because, you know, not drawing attention to yourself is one of your things. Mm. <laughs> so. Hey, this is where the GM makes um, his own word. What? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh, I like. Continue. I like what it. words are those? So, anyways. So, eventually, yeah, you go and you man your spot there, and uh, it's time for. And the other guy's like, hey, man, I got a. Run off to the, to the privy cover for a minute. Oh yeah, sure, no problem. And he uh, ducks out real fast. And that's when I look over and give the oh. secret sign. Guys, come here! No, um, <laughs> and you guys, you know, just walk up. You know, hi, we are normal customers and would like to <laughs> normally enter your casino. <laughs> I was exactly. yeah, I'm just going. I'm doing my normal thing because I already have a key, so this is like pretty much standard procedure. Blah blah blah. So, what weapons are you are you guys trying to enter with, not on Ajax's person? Like, what are you actually carrying? Because, like, walking in there with some great swords on your back is going to stick out really quickly. I don't know where to hide my other two giant weapons, especially my demon weapon. I don't want that thing lying around. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> well... And I don't want Ajax to hold it, either. <laughs> I might be... <sighs> uh, secreted uh, my pistol crossbow and um, I don't want anybody touching it. A couple <laughs> daggers. I, I guess mean, I probably couldn't get my rapier in. The rapier, uh, the daggers, and the hand, and the hand crossbows would be easy, be something that you could manage to keep with a decent sleight of hand. You could keep people yeah, from yeah. noticing. The rapier, not so much. Um, yeah, okay. So then I'll just take the daggers and the and the pistol crossbow. So, you know, you you check in some of your grid swords, but the real question is, you know, Betsy is currently on the back of Ajax cuz he can walk uh -huh. around with a weapon. Um what are you doing with the demon sword? <laughs> I guess there's only really one option. Um I guess I'm going to hand both the sword overturning and my demon sword to Ajax. But what about I... your Warhammer? Oh yeah, and Patisher's Warhammer. I give to him. You carry it. <laughs> so you depart with the sword well, and feel... Before I give it to... Before I give the Demon Sword to Ajax, I like hover over him like, whatever you do, don't listen to the voices inside your head. <laughs> <laughs> I look at you and say voices. And then I drop it next to him. Just on the ground, just... Or like right next to your shoulder or whatever. Okay. So when you grab the sword, you instantly oh hear in your oh head, Ajax. Um, <clears throat> oh God. Cut them down. Cut them all down, and I will feed you their strength. Well, the bodies at the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I, I quickly make a move, try to put it into the magical. <laughs> you just go. <oop>. <laughs> <laughs> you just like nope, oh, nope, 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 nope. Even then, that's scary. I don't know if the sword can talk to other swords. 
Do the, do the is sword it, and the it, crown it, converse regularly? I, I feel like the sword is gonna have a sword revolt. Like the, the door will open and swords will just come flying out. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Phil, you, um, instantly feel your shoulders slump. Oh, fuck. I as forgot about that. your but... strength leaves you. Oh, I, God. I, I notice this and I nudge him. I'm like, you can't leave the sword. It's kind of hard carrying a giant sword in this vicinity. Well, what I mean... What the fuck do you want me to do? Have him sneak it down to you in the fighting pits. <laughs> he doesn't want to touch it, though. <laughs> I'm I don't kind of scared, but I also kind of need my strength. Yeah, what's your strength at once you've lost all that? Like, it's low. I think it's, eight, I think it's 18. Oh, no, yeah, not including the... my... It's really low. It's like 12. Yeah. Like... I, I was including raging when that was like... I might be pulling this out of my butt, but is it okay for me to say there are other access points for the, the equipment that, that we're storing? Um, besides the front door? You know that it can actually be accessed other places inside the facility, um, including the fighting area, because that's where they store the weapons that they keep for normal okay. use. Now, this weapon okay. by no means looks like a standard greatsword, so if you're going to slip that to him, you would either need someone to, like, I don't know, try and glamour it up so it just looks like a normal greatsword. Not, well, mean... not a giant sword that looks black as midnight with a skull on the pommel. So, so here's <laughs> my thought about that line of action. We're supposedly luring Ivan down to watch the fight. So the moment Colin gets the sword in his hands, all bets are off. So I don't really think we need to discuss it. <laughs> So, okay, so your plan is get Ivan down there. Ajax just, like, throws him the sword from wherever the compartment is. And then and, uh, we anarchy. Yeah. <laughs> then just anarchy. Yeah, of course. Okay. And then the treasure. And then yeah. the, the treasure. All right, so, all right, so you look up there, um, and everyone kind of uh, walks on in. Um, Myro, you're sitting back there you're having a good old time. Uh, at this point, you've managed to pocket yourself like a good thousand gold, and for gambling because you've also been spending a lot of it <laughs> um, on like on cigars and, and booze. Uh, he's got like the finest cigars in his mouth, kicking back up. He's got you know people paying attention to him. How much do you think bit. I actually have to buy my cigars and I don't have them import as special? Oh, I mean you can. They have the I extra I thought you finest. wanted to remain untraceable. Importing specialized cigars is not a way to remain so, untraceable. Anyways, you're kicking Jim back. Jim Barkeeper doesn't know the difference. You're kicking back. And you see the rest of them walk in the front door. And the big one, Kolik, again, is in this like awful hooded cat mask stop monstrosity. Describing stop describing it. I will ref never stop describing it. Because I'm picturing it as like one of those like ninja police from Naruto but just really like homeless looking. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about the Anbu, not the ninja police. Whatever, you know, the ones with the cat mask, the Anbu, yes. yes. I couldn't remember the name. So I picture him looking like a homeless, gigantic Anbu, okay? Oh my god. <laughs> That's what Kolik looks like right now. Stop. Um, and, you know, gets a few stairs, but the weirder things have happened. You go up to the desk and let him know this is the person that you want to enter into the fights. Yeah, this is a uh, strong beard, iron shoulder. <laughs> strong beard, iron shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, strong beard, iron shoulder. Well, okay. Now, just so you know, um, the night, the fights for tonight are slated to be to the death. Are you okay with taking that risk, Mister Iron Shoulder? Oh, 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 it's the enemy. So you should be afraid of me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's um, very excited. <laughs> Well, then we'll I get to meet Ivan later tonight. I, I kick him in the shin. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, then uh, let's go ahead, and if you don't mind, uh, you know, um, she goes and calls over Ajax. Like, would you escort them down to the the basement to, you know, for the, uh, Mr. Iron Shoulder here to to wait for the for the fights for that will be coming soon. Iron Shoulder, eh? <laughs> I say with a grin. <laughs> <laughs> Strange name. <laughs> and I uh, motion them. I All right. Them. <clears throat> you take them down there, and you know, pass some other guards. They're like, "Hey, Jax, blah blah blah." Um, you know, realizing when this gig's over, like, "Oh, I actually made some friends here." Uh, no. <laughs> Too bad we're nope. gonna have to kill them. Nope, I never cared. <laughs> my, my greatest friend is treasure. <laughs> my greatest friend is treasure. <laughs> I hate it. I all like of you. this guy. I like. This it's guy. like Scrooge McDuck with a large sword. Uh, no. And yeah, you guys are going down to to the basement. Um. Meanwhile, Wait, I'm going up to the party. Yeah. Meanwhile, you and Tara are heading up to the party. Um, well, I'm gonna stop off at my rooms and mm -hmm. change the because I mean, the Kanye outfit was just to get in the door and be super flash. So I'm gonna change into a much more like make my clothes change into a much more very like fashionable but slightly understated garment that that would. That would be the type of garment to impress, like someone like Ivan. Like not super flashy, but like this is a man of business. This is a man who so, knows trends. That type of deal. So Lady Gaga meat dress. Got it. Um, no, <laughs> no, no. All right, you dress fashionably yet refined. Um, yes. I go ahead and, at this point, uh, switch my black dress into something a little bit more bold, because I, I do want to make some loud statements. I'm I do like up. the, I do picture the two of you walking this room together, and then just stopping once the door closes, and magically your clothes both change. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I want, like, I want, like, a bright red dress. Not, like, sequenced, but it's got, like, maybe, like, little hits of sparkles Jessica on it. Jessica Rabbit. Are you yeah, there you go. Oh, my yeah. God, you're doing, you're, all right, so you basically become Jessica Rabbit. You already have yeah. long, red, flowing hair. Um, yeah, we're already there. Bam, you're not bad, you're just drawn that way. Um, exactly. All right, so, you get dressed up there, and you're good to go. Myro, um, what are you, what are you doing at this point? You have no idea what the plan is. You just, <laughs> um... I don't think we've seen you since you flew onto the roof. No, we did. We saw him when we... Oh, wait, no, that, that's not true, yeah. So, you what, didn't. What What are you doing? <laughs> um, I'm gonna go find my good old pal, uh, what's his face, Ajax. Uh, Jukes. Ajax. Um, you I'm saw... also trying to find Ajax. You're with Ajax. You oh. dumbass. <laughs> Uh, well, okay. In your case, you could, you know you saw Ajax leading them to a door that you've never been through. Um, you were you going to follow them? Um. Sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um. So you know, I mean, just you could just basically blend. In. Give me a stealth check, just if you just like walk up and blend in with the group because you're tiny. Um, so you just kind of walk up and blend in with them because a few other people are going down there they want to get good seats and everything and uh, you all go down into the basement which is like this very large sprawling arena area um, currently it looks like there is owlbear fights Ooh. how dare they um, where it looks like, you know, two trained owlbears are fighting each other. Surprise owlbears. <laughs> Ajax. I kind of need my demon sword back. <laughs> <laughs> Tara, Stalker, or, sorry, Nico. Um, is there any way to, like, hide the sword? I'm oh not going to use it, but I kind of need it beside me. Uh, we're upstairs, like, we're gonna be mingling it up at the VIP. Well, room. Neko's no, like, He was talking to Stalker. He was oh. Like, any spells you have? <laughs> Tara's not ready to have spells. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I don't have anywhere I put it. <laughs> don't you have invisibility and you can carry it and be next to him? I could, but that's not. But that's too wise. <laughs> too smart. 
What about uh, the voices? And the man's still scrying. <laughs> oh god, the voices. <laughs> the voices. Oh my god. Like, don't you know, like, I don't know, any illusion spells you can cast on my sword? Neko Make doesn't... it look like a hat? Neko, 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 Neko doesn't know spells! <laughs> and Terra's upstairs. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> They can look like a hat. You're wearing the sword on top of your head. <laughs> They'll never see it coming. <laughs> or just the hat sticking to his back. So, while well, you guys are in the basement, like, kind of panicking, um, you know, Tara and Tafiel, uh go and uh, enter into the VIP lounge in their fine attires. And there, you know, you see a lot of kind of wealthy looking people and everything and um over in the corner is a large group with a there's a man like towering like near seven feet tall but also extremely fat or like basically it's like esquire gragas is over in the corner <laughs> um oh god uh <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Esquire Gregs is over in the corner with a bunch of other like well dressed people and it's being loud and everything. And from the description you heard, you believe that to be Ivan. Um But oh. there is one complication you notice. In the crowd of people sitting there talking to Ivan, you recognize a Mr. Cog's Adamwell. Oh my god. Uh oh. That's cool. I don't walk up. <laughs> Nobody here oh! is on good terms with Cogs Adamwell. I I don't actually know Cogs Adamwell. No, you don't. Actually, that's true. You Cogs like looks up and spits his drink out of his mouth. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Buddy. I the... hate you. <laughs> Excuse me for a second. He like gets up and walks away from Ivan, and uh, walks up and goes, "The fuck are you doing here?" I had some time off up from Rob Tugs and came to, uh, you know, have a little fun. He just stares at you. What are you going to do? <laughs> Nothing. Don't. He's like looking constantly around um, and seeing you like. <laughs> Listen, I'm working something here, okay? Last time we all did business, you and me, we came to some mutually exclusive profit. Yes, I used you, okay? But. Wait, wait, no, wait, hold up, hold up. I think canonically, we've been business partners since Asian Halstrom. He went Cause at missing. The end of, at he... the, no, no, no. Because at the end of Rob Tug's rest story arc, oh, you sent... I got a message from Cog saying he wanted do, to do, do business. Okay. I didn't remember that. George That's, you're right. Here. You're right. My... Well, George Lucas, guys. My Come bad. On. My bad. I think Tafiel's the only one on good terms with them. Well, it's true, but they hadn't done business yet. Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you guys haven't that. done business yet because you don't know where exactly he's been. He's like, he's just looking. at you, He goes, "All right, I just know the way you do things tends to get messy, and I'm trying to score a good deal here." Okay, so look, look me, look me in the eye, Tafiel. Are you gonna look fuck this up? <laughs> I look him in I the wonder. eye and I say, "Yes." <laughs> Yes, I love it. He reaches over to his side, takes a big swig out of a flask, and goes, I reach my arm over, I reach my hand out, I put it on his shoulder, I say, but it will be profitable for both of us. Do tell. How? how... Uh, so, I guess, are we, I, we'll move over to a corner, somewhere not, you know, everyone, I say, I, you remember the big man? Which one? I've seen a lot of big men. The the very big one from Asium. Ca cauliflower? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, he has a bit of a personal grudge uh, with uh, 
Ivan over there. And uh, do you remember a little little uh, troublemaker called Miro? <sighs> that fucking halfling. Man, I swear, I th someone kept beating us to so many jobs. I never had proof it was him, but I know it was him. So we ran him out of town, yeah. Well, uh, quick question, um, quick question, just a side note. Uh, do I have any idea where the vault is from here? Uh, from the basement? Um, yes. Make a, uh, make a perception check. So what you do notice is that from here, you're kind of looking around and everything, and like watching everyone fight, and the, the owlbears fight in this ring, and at one point, one owlbear slams the other to the ground, and you swear that the edge of the ring, like the curtain, pops up for a moment. And in that moment, you swear you see a trap door under the ring. Cap. So I say to Cox, I say to Cox, um, so by the end of tonight, if things go the way we expect them to, Ivan and his friends will be dead. The vault will be empty, and the Shade Runners and Osium Steve Guild can come in and clean up the rest. Well, that's the thing is, I'm buying this place. Ooh. Well, that's not a great investment. No, listen, Ivan's incredibly sick. He's only got like he expects weeks to live. He doesn't trust any of his fuck up friends to run it, and this is his legacy. Well. Wouldn't you rather have it for free? He starts tapping his chin. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, but knowing you, you're going to cause all sorts of damage here. I mean, an investment's an investment. You still don't pay for the actual facility. You get to come in, clean up, and you run a profitable business from here on out. I mean, I've seen I've seen the amount of money that gets turned over here. I have an idea. Go ahead. All right. But I went in on your cut. That's fine. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back there. We're in negotiations. I'm going to offer. I'm I'm going to take his. I'm going to take his asking price right here, right now. I'm signing. The, I'm gonna sign the deed. I'm gonna get this place. Have it everything. Make him announce it tonight at the fight. I say. Then make sure he's at the fight. Then because when you cause your shit storm, I can keep the guards from interfering because they'll work for me. Oh, that works. I like golems. It. Golems. <laughs> <laughs> But look at me, look at me, look at me. Tafiel, Tafiel, look at me. I never stopped looking. <laughs> he still says, you try and fuck me over on this. Cause, when have I ever? <laughs> he just glares at you. <laughs> okay, so, uh, while they're having their discussion, uh, by chance do I notice if Cogs has any... Weaponry on them. You we're haven't seen Cogs. You're in the basement where the fighting ring is. I thought, I thought he was in the basement. No, they're up on the no. third floor VIP room. Oh, He's okay. currently That's going through. He goes, Right, well then. Come with me, partner. Uh, before, it, before I get let over, I reach out my hand. He takes it cautiously and shakes your hand. Do I believe partner. he's going to be honoring this deal at all? Which one? <laughs> I'm going to say, say Cogswell at the moment. I, make a sense motive. I don't know. You're basically watching the two biggest BSers um, in the realm make a business <laughs> deal with each other. The, well, scary, pa the scary part to you, Tara, is that you think they're both telling the truth, but neither of them believes the other one. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what you're perceiving from here so he leads you over and introduces you to Ivan as his business partner um, from Rob Tug's rest that uh, you know he's like so I decided I'm going to go for your asking price and we'll do it right here tonight my friend here 
he's willing to invest in it from Raltos. They're sending them some extra gold to help finalize things. So, bring out those papers. Let's do this right here. And he, like, reaches in his pocket and pulls out a freaking contract and puts it down. Let's do this right now. And Ivan looks stunned for a moment. He goes, And you have all of the money right here, right now. And Cox pulls out a small bag, turns it upside down, and just dumps platinum onto the table. Like, an excessive amount of platinum. I mean, platinum's really worth, what, 10 gold a piece? 100 gold. Is an it... excessive amount of platinum. Okay. <laughs> okay? So it's like a bag of holding that's just yes. filling platinum. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um... <clears throat> and then he just, like, kicks back and props his feet up on the table and pushes the document over. Uh, and then with a, with, you know, with, with a sigh, he goes, and you'll, you'll keep the name, right? And, and the statue of me, right? Uh, this is, this is my legacy. I've spent my life building this place, and I have no children of my own. I don't, Fine. And Cog just looks at him, doesn't say anything. Guy signs the document, hands over, and goes like, "And you'll announce it tonight." Fine. Uh, I make sure to sign the document as well. Make sure my my name is on the. Uh, Cog smacks your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I look at it. We I have know. our own deal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I motion over uh, uh, for like a bottle of champagne and I start pouring glasses for everyone. Sarah toast. toasts and he goes, come, now let's go watch some idiots beat each other to death with pointed objects. <laughs> I couldn't have put it better myself. So. I'm going to make a bluff check on that one. <laughs> 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 Maybe you couldn't have. So, you know, the posse of you goes traveling downstairs, and, uh, you know, so Kolik, you've been nervously over to the side there as, you know, they're waiting the fight. The Albear fight finishes. And, well, no, uh, I'm like, t I've, I've been trying to get my Betsy sword or at least my demon sword back. Well, see, it, currently you're still not supposed to be holding a weapon at this moment because there's still a lot of people oh, around. Oh, my God. But Ajax has Betsy on his back and um, Got right is here. leaning Dude, against the down. wall where he knows he can I access the strength. equipment. <laughs> we understand. We have a plan. <laughs> I love you having that sword the moment you get separated from it. You're just like, oh. I fucking hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who took it and used it. Motherfucker. <laughs> Rob Tug warned you there was no turning back from that moment. Alright, before I enter the pits, I look at Ajax. The sword. I hand over Betsy. No, the wrong <laughs> sword! So, I nod. I thought, I thought you... No, that didn't work. So at this, at this moment, you're kind of standing around the pit. Um... Oh God! So you're standing around there, feeling, oh God, you're you're not strong at the moment. You're not. You hate this feeling. You hate not having your own strength. And everyone's kind of standing around there. And coming in, and a crowd starts piling in. And then, uh, walking through the door, you see Tothiel and Tara and Cox. <laughs> um and. Bye. Yeah, you also like the fuck, and with them is Ivan, who is nearly as tall as you. But the years yeah. he's let himself go, but you'd recognize, you'd recognize. Yeah, um, he he looks he looks like he's coughing. He looks horrible, he's, red he's, face. Does he have a little a little tinge on his on his handkerchief? Little tinge on his handkerchief, you know. Um. You can a see a little holiday, bit of blood. Dying of consumption. Yeah, yeah. You can exactly. see a little bit of blood coming out of my mouth, just in my teeth. <laughs> You're just, just holding everything back, just to try to get to him. But I'm standing still. And you recognize his entourage? 
the the nine people that were there with him the day it happened. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, quick question: Am I anywhere near Mr. Iron Side? Um, like, would I, I be able to get to him easily, or see? Like, yeah, you guys were way. currently all just kind of hanging around, like waiting. So you're like, okay, right... I would like to slide up to him. Mm -hmm. Hey, big guy. Oh, extra, extra ten percent off the cut. If you take out Cogs with him, <laughs> take him up both at the same time. Ten percent for you. That like a deal. Oh. Uh, <laughs> one. <laughs> Problem at a time. First Ivan, then next to each maybe. Other. You can hit them both at the same time. <laughs> Miro, how about this? I, I, I don't oh, think... I, no, you, you keep the money. But I want... You know that demon sword? Okay. I need it as soon as possible. Okay. Get that to me. Even with and the I'll demon see what sword? I can do about cops. Even with the demon sword, I'm pretty sure Phil loses to Cog. <laughs> yeah, but I don't. I haven't seen. I haven't seen yeah, he's never fight. seen Cog's fight. He knows nothing so about I, Cog's. Yeah. So I'm not gonna meta game. No, yeah, yeah. He knows that. No, no, no. He knows that Cog's is at least as powerful as Tim. Oh, that is true. Oh, that is true. And you saw Tim turn into a fucking dragon. <laughs> he will be a worthy opponent after I kill him. <laughs> That is true. That is true. You do. You. That's funny. You who did not see Kong's fight know a bit of Kong's backstory, unlike the people who fought him. Um, yeah. So, he leads them in there, and uh, Ivan like calms down the crowd and gets up, uh, stepping into the ring where you're sitting there now on one side of the ring, Phil, um, just uh -huh. patiently waiting without you know just holding Betsy. And on the other side of the ring is some random large mook that you've never seen before. You've no idea who he is, but he's holding uh -huh. a large war axe and it's glaring at you. And Ivan gets up in the middle and goes, Welcome, everyone, for another glorious night of revelry, debauchery, and fighting. And people cheer. Boo. I just want, I have some news to give. As some of you know, but many of you haven't, I am dying. I have Isn't lived... is that the truth? <laughs> I have some condition that none of the priest clerics or money that I've thrown at it has been able to cure. And they do not give me very long. But I have... not sympathetic. I have lived a long, full life, and... I have made many mistakes along the way. To can get I do here. some stuff while he's doing his speech? Can you what? <laughs> can I do some stuff while he's doing the speech? Because I want to get to Ajax and I want to try and get the demon sword. I mean, he walked into the ring. Your guys are in the crowd. So yeah. so you can easily just walk to do whatever. Um, and the crowd's kind of shocked. Goes, but the party will continue even after old Ivan has passed away. You know, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life to get here. And I've tried my best since then to provide as much joy and happiness into the world. For, I'll admit it, at the beginning of my life, I was a real son of a bitch. I, uh, made mistakes. I caused a lot of people pain. So now all I want to do, my legacy, is for you all to continue to be able to enjoy whatever brings you happiness in life. So you'll have to excuse the sentiments of a dying old fat man. But I found someone who will continue to run this place in the spirit that it has in my absence. Um, Mr. Cogs Adams, well, and he gestures and Cogs waves, uh, who is you know, well known for brewing most of the drinks that you guys are, are having this evening, and uh, he will be taking over. So... With that, I'll Wait, join no, you. No mention of other investors? No. <laughs> so, God damn it. I mean, you didn't actually invest. That was just your excuse for being there. <laughs> um, so, on that note, we will kick off this first fight of the night with uh, who we have here? Oh. Strong uh, Ironbeard? <laughs> <laughs> 
And you're not a dwarf? Huh. Okay. I'm the serious threat, Adam. Strong beard is strong beard iron shoulder. <laughs> Let's get that clear. Strong beard iron shoulder. My bad. Um, but. And, he, and he shrugs and he goes, and my old friend, Garage the Moose Jackson. Garage the Moose Jackson. <laughs> okay, but, but Lashak. Um, if if this works as a as a dramatic spark to light the fire of this debacle, oh God! As he says, um, "Strong beard, iron uh, mm -hmm. thing." I'm picturing, I'm picturing this, and this could be wrong. Ajax takes the demon sword, tosses it to Colic. I, I was exactly thinking. <laughs> and I walk up. And I walk up to, to Ivan, and I tap him on the shoulder, and I say, I think you mean Colic Ironside. <laughs> well, you're, I mean, uh, you, you'd have to walk into the ring past the guards to do that. I'll, well, then, then I'll call it. The, it okay, yeah, so it. at that moment, yeah, well, <laughs> go ahead. As, as, as soon as uh, he says that um, Cog is the owner, I open up the, the reservatory and above the sword and start walking down and at the end i just want to toss it into the ring um you, you the whole way you're walking it goes use me look at all of these peons around you we could carve a bloody mess of this place i do my best <laughs> to you, you have the strength and the skill i can tell i do have a strength of 20. <laughs> 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 it's kind of like what? <laughs> um, um, no, the sword that can't make you do anything. It doesn't have that sort of willpower to like enforce itself upon you. Yeah, it's not like the crown. No, not no. Not until you start killing. Not until you start killing. Oh, okay. So you walk up there and people are like, "Huh?" And you just toss the sword into the ring. Um, yes. And it goes, whoosh, whoosh, and it just lands on the ground in between Ivan and Kolik. And, oh my God. and then at that moment, you hear Tothiel yell out from the crowd, I think you mean Colic Ironside! And as soon as he says it, I jump for my sword. <sighs> Dramatic. He looks confused, and he's like, Colic Ironside? Like he's trying to remember the name. Um, Surprise round! Mother. And you jump, and you grab the sword, and your strength returns to you. <laughs> Like, yeah. your muscles, like, <laughs> refill with vigor. <laughs> and he Not only that, I go into a rage. So, some, some people say his tracksuit gained sizes that day. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, the tracksuit rips um, as your muscles return. You're just like, oh! Smash. <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking of, like, the Sergeant of Armored Oh, by the arms. way, that, that sleight of hand was to palm a dagger, and as soon as he does that, I'm going to turn... And uh, knife one of Ivan's um, <laughs> partners in the throat. Oh God! It begins. Whew. So much for those mystery skits. <laughs> so much for those mystery skits. No, the minute I said it included Ivan, Phil threw the possibility out the window. Yeah. Yeah. God. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you grab the sword. Ivan turns and looks at you, seeing you book up, and he, and his face goes white. And he goes, "No." It couldn't be. I, I take off my cat mask. You <laughs> 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 have the cat mask and the iron beard. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. This super freaking like dramatic epic moment, and you have to say, "I take off my cat mask." <laughs> I, I also wipe off the grass. <laughs> no, no, I already removed that. He got. He found more. He found more. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, as and this he, is he, happening, I'm...